For over 10 years now, I've been experimenting in a lot of different ways in trying to create habitat for mason bees or the solitary bees, the native pollinators, the wild bees, and have tried working with making simple, almost bird house-like structures with little roofs on them with Japanese knotweed. Those work pretty well. Experimenting now with um, Phragmites, which is another, you know, quote-unquote invasive plant that makes amazing tubes for them. So we'll be exploring those more this year. Tried doing trays and those really didn't work out very well at all. In fact, it seemed like the more effort, the more regular the, the housing was, the less interested they were. And so this year I'm trying a few different things. We're going to expand on the natural tubes and try to get more housing up in warm areas, nice sunny early morning exposed areas. But I'm also trialing some things with a drill. Let me explain what I mean. My real good friend Eric, who's an amazing permaculture farmer down in the Hudson Valley of New York. I'm going to link to him in the description. Check him out if you are in that area. Anyway, he came up with a great idea this spring that he shared. We said, look, I, I bought some or have some 5 16 and 3 8 inch drill bits. What about walking around the woods and finding some dead ash trees or other dead trees and just drilling habitat directly into those old dead trees? So I had to swing by the hardware store anyway yesterday and I grabbed some bits, some 6 inch long 5 16 and 1 or 2 3 8 inch bits. I know I could probably get away with quarter inch bits as well. And I know that six inch depth is about what the bees really, really want. And those fit in my cordless drill, um, my impact driver, my cordless drill. And now I'm trialing out what it looks like to work with those. There's some extremely high value in having dead standing trees uh, out in the world. And so here's one, I talked about this tree in the past. My friend Keith came by, a uh, really amazing arborist, climbed up and cut the tree apart. It was dead already. And you can see it's first made habitat for pileated woodpeckers or a dining space for them to peck through and get worms, which then created recesses and pockets that uh, smaller birds can occupy. And so I'm adding some more layers down low where I can actually have access. And on the south, the east, and the southwest side, I'm punching in these holes with these two drills and just trying to get a feel for the rhythm of it. It's a little slower than I thought it would be, but I've got about 30 or so in there now. The question I have is, will the bees find them? Probably they will, if they explore all over the place. I'm trying to put these sorts of hotels uh, within 20 to 30 yards of where there's some beautiful pollen so that they have a good home base and At some point I might trial the idea maybe not with this tree But other trees that we want to cut down the landscape to cut them very high and actually put a sheet metal roof over the top So I could do all sorts of different habitat like have robin nests holes and cape or um, chickadee spots and that kind of thing and then all sorts of different diameter holes for the wild bees and let that last 10, 20 years. But I'm gonna do this on a few trees and just kind of monitor it. See if over the next few days, do I start seeing activity here? And within a month or so, do they pack with mud? And if so, I think I'm gonna make this a regular practice just to basically pepper the woods, trees that are dead or that we're cutting down or that we see pileated woodpeckers drilling holes in punch in a whole bunch of holes on the south, the southeast and southwest sides to support some native bees. We've planted so many trees at this six acre site that make flowers of all sorts of shapes and colors like this northern hardy almond, this tall Japanese plum, the beautiful semi-dwarfing peach under it. Heck, even the garlic mustard is about ready to be a huge nectar flow right now. And sweet cherries, they volunteered here over time. This is actually an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old seedling that just popped up one day and we just let it grow. That's just teeming with flowers, all looking for pollination. We're hoping to make some time this year to also focus on setting up some actual beehives and keeping bees with the intent of getting a little bit of honey over time, uh, but mainly to support their needs. 
But for now, it feels like the low-hanging fruit is to really focus on taking dead trees that are around and tubes that are around and making as much housing as possible as these little beautiful native friends wake up and do the really hard work of making sure that we get food and medicine too. Thank you, little bees. Thanks, dead trees. Thanks for watching.